Hello, John Clements for the UMass Video Fruit Advisor. Today's Friday, July 20th, 2007. There's a couple things I wanted to show you quick today here at the UMass Cold Spring Orchard in Belchertown, Mass. Uh, the first one is we're in a young block of Honeycrisp trees here. These trees are uh, six or seven years old. And typically this time of the year, uh, mid-July, we start to see a, a, honey, a disorder of Honeycrisp that is sometimes referred to as, as a Honeycrisp chlorosis. I call it the Honeycrisp yellows. And what happens is the foliage starts to turn a mottled um, yellow from the normally dark green it is. It's not all over the whole tree necessarily, but in parts of the tree. And there's a couple characteristics to this disorder. Um, typically we find it on trees that have a, a lighter crop and weaker growing Honeycrisp versus trees that have a, a heavier crop and are more vigorously growing seem to have less of this chlorosis or yellows. Now a few researchers have, have looked at this issue um, it does remind you of potato leafhopper injury. A uh, honeycrisp can get potato leafhopper, but just because you get it uh, doesn't mean you have potato leafhopper, so you need to scout for that. But it seems to be a physiological di disorder that's related to um, starch or car carbohydrate movement in the plant. Now the good thing is that the chlorosis or the yellowing itself doesn't seem to affect the trees that much, but the fact that the, the tree is perhaps undercropped and or weak is not a good thing. So um, it's important to have an annual moderate crop load with Honeycrisp. Um, be very particular about thinning Honeycrisp. And it's also important to keep the trees vigorous and growing well. Again, you're more likely to see this yellowing uh, on Honeycrisp that are, are weak and not growing as well. Just quickly a reminder that we need to keep up the calcium applications this time of the year on Honeycrisp. Honeycrisp will show um, bitter bitter pit or corking if we don't uh, get a lot of calcium into the tree. So that's the first thing I wanted to talk about here is this Honeycrisp yellows. Um, not a huge problem, doesn't seem to affect the tree that much. And then let's look at a couple peaches very briefly that uh, one we're picking now, one we'll be picking very shortly. Well the first peach I was going to show you was uh, PF1. Paul Friday's one of Paul Friday's Flame and Fury peaches, but the, uh, the orchard crew has pretty well picked these few trees we have clean, so um, I did pick some PF1s yesterday and tested them. Um, some of them are certainly ready, others could wait a little longer, but it's the first of the uh, real red coloring early peaches we have, that's PF1. So let's go look at another one that uh, we'll be picking in a day or two. Another early peach is these early star um, from the Fruit Acres breeding program. It was tested as FA101. This early star seems like a, a nice peach to me. I haven't seen too many split bits, so I haven't looked at it really close. We'll probably be picking this Monday, so that'd be July 21st, 22nd, 23rd in that area here in Massachusetts. Uh, notice also that these trees are be, being grown on a perpendicular V. So, those are the two early peaches. A little bit about the Honeycrisp yellows for this week's UMass Fruit Advisor. This is John Clements. Until next time, have a good day.